Howdy, 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 everybody, and welcome to the BSR MX5 Pro Series here at Suzuka. And I am joined by Tubsy and Sammy on the cam. Tubsy, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. How you been? How's this week been treating you? Oh, it's been fantastic here. And we're back in the land of the rising sun. And honestly, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I've got a lot of fond memories of Suzuka. I feel like I say that every week. Oh, no. But I do. I genuinely have great memories of Suzuka. The Skip Barbers here are an amazing course. And I'm looking forward to seeing what these MX-5 drivers uh, can bring along with this package. Yeah, the MX-5 is definitely one to bring us just such great joy in close battle. We saw a very fun few races back in Brands Hatch, actually, last week, which unfortunately you weren't there, but I was joined by Sammy, who's back with us on the cams. Uh, you'll hear his voice when we bring on the Wheel of Justice, but, cur but currently, to decide the first grid, it's all about qualifying, and all these guys just making their way through the S's, which is just so fun to look at. Yeah, you can definitely see it. Can you tell some team drafting going on? <laughs> yeah, all the Excite cars being led by Jack Ashton after a very hard uh, race week at last week. He's definitely looked to make it a uh, one to go for this race. And with two races left, we are nearing the playoffs or the showdown, as they like to call it. Yeah, I mean, looking at the looking at some of the lap times here, there is. Uh, a little bit of a gap between the, the, the top five drivers uh, leading on from the rest of the field, as we've kind of seen all season, really. Um, we've got some familiar names running up uh, away from the field. But, you know, qualifying hasn't finished yet. We've still got a chance to get a lap in, or finish the lap, should I say, for these guys. Um, and then if you go further down the field, everything starts to get all tight and uh, all a little bit closer on. So hopefully that means that we're going to have some great mid-pack action during the race. Now the pack is going to be very close and always the mid pack is very fun because you got the mix of amateurs and pros all up in there and it's just always so fun to watch between them yeah i mean uh, i think this is probably the most sparse we've seen the grid between ams and pros i remember uh uh I'm trying to remember i think it was barcelona uh we started to see a, a few of the, the ams creep up in the pre-qualifying session uh, this week we're seeing our amateur drivers going a bit further down, but that's when our wheel comes into play. And uh, as of race two, even if you don't maybe get the greatest of starts going forward, that wheel can certainly throw a, a spanner in the works for you. Definitely. Uh, the spanner... Spanner is life being thrown in the works here. That is something we've seen a lot. Uh, sometimes a good wheel spin will keep you up at the top after a very bad race. Sometimes a bad wheel spin with a minus seven and you just happen to crash out of the first corner, it's just going to kick you in the butt. Yeah, but it gives you that lifeline and also gives it a bit of variety each race. You know, you're not going to see the same guys qualifying, getting up front. And, you know, I'm saying week after week, we see some of the fastest guys uh, in qualifying then have to kind of almost prove their worth throughout the remainder of the night as, uh, as they'll have to fight their way through the pack, potentially, uh, going all the way. So, you know, we've seen a lot of big reverse grids towards the beginning part of this season. So I'm sure we're going to see something similar tonight. Definitely, and I hope y'all are excited to see what is coming up tonight for the BSR MX5 Pro Series. So I believe we only have about five cars left on track, and we're going to get to our first grid. Yeah, I think uh, the grid's pretty much going to line up. Where we've got a couple drivers uh, just finishing out their lap. Uh, Wout Van Essen, I think as we're looking at the moment, just about to tie up the end of his uh, qualifying run. I believe they get three laps, three sh three shots at it. Is that right? I don't believe there is a lap cap. Is there not a lap cap? Oh, okay, so it's just 15 minutes and just blat it out. Yes. Ah, awesome. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, most drivers yeah. take three laps. Oh, there you go. Fair enough. I knew that number came from somewhere. <laughs> Teamwork. That, I, I, all I know is that most of them, they, they usually have a bit of teamwork involved uh, on who's going to launch when. And uh, to get five guys, and if one of them has a bad lap, they all wait up for the next guy. And so they usually have three laps total in a massive team. If you're just out on your own and just gunning it, you're probably just going to be running with uh, yourself and just run as many laps. But the most we saw was five. This is. Right. Is he 
finishing up a lap? I believe so. Ah, uh, cut off. Eh, cut short. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> Denied. You try it, you couldn't do it. Goodbye. All right. Here is our grid for the BS. Our MX-5 Pro Series starting up pole is Jack Axton, and this is a very dominating pole for Excite Racing. It's a 1, 2, 3, 4, all for Excite Racing. Jack Axton starts on pole, followed by Adam McNally, Ashley Beard, Brian J. Holmes, Luke Cooper, Alex Sesenry, Peter Van Gool, Stuart Dick, Adam Delmont, Niels Carlson, Stephen Baxter, Dave Hampson in 12th place. Starting in 13th behind him is James McRitchie, Abdur Al Amri, Nick McKeeran, Matthew Emery, Carl Hardy, Kip Stevens, Carl Shacklett, Ralph Cullingham, Vuta Van Essen, Charles Kellerman, Dale Benison, and Martin Sampson, your top 24. Now, that's a name that we usually see up there, and that is our championship leader, Jason Cooper. And he's actually... I'm trying to find his name in the timing screen. I, I don't can't see him on the grid. Hang on, let me, let me get in super close. You can't see it, but he's actually just put his face on the on the screen. Yeah, I'm licking my microphone. That is disgusting. No, I can't see Cooper there. I can see Luke Cooper. I believe Jason Cooper's not here. Oh, okay. Maybe we uh, maybe in between race one and two, we'll have a look and see uh, see if there's a uh, an explanation so we can find out for you. You ready to take the green though? Oh yeah, I'm ready to take the green as the lights are coming on. It's one, two, three, four, five red lights. And away we go for racing here for the BSR MX-5 Pro Series here at Suzuka. Okay, now I'm I'm super excited for the uh, for the S-curves coming up. I'm seeing like 40 odd, what, 40 cars exactly of these guys piling into the S-curves. It's going to be something great to see, boys. It's an excite lead going into the first and second curves. Some Swift Cooper cars of Alex Cesare and Luke Cooper right behind. And they're going three wide, and it's very beautiful as he come the S curves. Let's just enjoy this. Got fired out pretty well. I, I didn't see any of the old RG bargy. Everyone filing in, getting ready to run their race. That's a that's a pretty solid bo start, boys. There we go. All right. Well, we usually see this uh, at Brands Hatch. Everyone took the first lap very nice. Uh, it. Well, I say that they took the first turns couple nicely, and then uh, they didn't have a clean lap whatsoever. Then just everybody died, especially in race three. Uh, but as they're coming through Dagna one and two, I don't see any off tracks or smoke up through the field. Everyone's taking this pretty nice. Well, I spoke oh. too soon as uh, that is Liam's Max Wright off the track. Right. Love that Automax skin. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the old uh, Castrol skins. Uh, Castrol paints, sorry. I believe we have Silk Zone runs with the Castrol paint on. There we go. Looking at Abdur Al Amri. Getting a little bit of a bump draft from Nick McKeer right behind Nick McKeer. Look down the inside. It's going to be a late dive into Spoon. It's going to send it. Pretty lackluster send, but Amri. Oh my goodness, who was that? Uh, I think that's Carl Jacquelet. Yes. Um. He might have gone into the grass when it would break. So. Yeah, I mean, it kind of comes back to what we've been saying all season long. Rear end gets loose, goodbye. You, you can't save it, but there's enough runoff area. I think he managed to avoid hitting the wall, so he can probably drive that thing uh, drive that thing home. As we see the boys go through uh, 130R for the first time, heading over into uh, what I used to remember is, is Casio or Curve or Corner. I think everything's a curve on this track. Um, I don't know if they've renamed it because someone else has bought oh, the Oh, we got a machine. spinner. Peter Van Gool's around. Oh, that's out, that's out, the, out of the triangle chicane. That's what I call it. Uh, <laughs> Peter Van Gool is around and just stopped on the side. That's how you rejoin a track. You wait for everyone to pass it before rejoining back. Not salty, I swear. But look at <laughs> that Swift Cooper car looking down the inside. That is Luke Cooper. No, that's Alex Cesare trying to make a move on Ashley Beard. And you know what? He's he's made that stick. I mean, he hasn't he, he hasn't held it into the into S curve, of course. But uh, but you know what? He really threw that thing in, kind of not not, not aggressively enough in in uh, first part of first corner. But um, really made up for it in the second part. That was quite an impressive move. He's still really staking his claim for that position. It was an attempt. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I mean, also the other thing is, is what lap two. There's no point in just licking the stamp right now. Yeah, no point in trying to do that. But Alex Esnery, he's not in the wild cards for the showdown with two races to go. So he's just trying to uh, show as much as he can and bring as much points to his team as we see Stuart Dick trying to move around the outside of the asymmetric car of Carl said but look but doesn't get doesn't get it all of it but he does get it on the ace and that's what going wide does for you now he's stuck in between Hampson uh, Baxter and Carlson where is Stuart Dick gonna go now Stuart Dick he is a wild card so far in the showdown he's needing to get some good results so far and yeah, I think at this point it's just whether he's working out whether lap two of, of race one is going to be the place to do it, or you know, is he going to try and just const like you know, just domino results uh, each way through? You don't need to win every race, but just consistently place well. But you know, <laughs> he's going to go too wide through 130R with the looks of it, so maybe not. Oh, I saw this in the Amateur Cup yesterday. It doesn't really work out well. But they fan out, get it right back. But McNally leading out Ashton and Holmes. as is a, still an excite one, two, three, four. And I think he managed to hold it. I think they're all okay. Oh, yeah, uh, but yeah, we've still got the excite brothers. Uh, why am I saying brothers? <laughs> we've still got the excite, uh, excite team We're holding one, three, one, two, three, and four with a little bit of a shuffle in between as we look into David Hampson. Going around oh, the they're end. going four they're wide. wide. Shots no, of it. Monza here, where they almost brought it five wide. It looked like they could do it, but James McRitchie leading out that little pack, but up ahead is Dick Carlson and Baxter, as Baxter leads it into turn ones and two. <laughs> they still haven't given up. They're still going two wide behind these boys. Oh, no. As from what we've seen so far in this series, they never give oh, up. Oh, teammates Hampton collided there. Up. Yeah, the Simlabs cars got a little bit too much together as Dave Hansen got into the back of his teammate as he's just trying to regain. He's got Kip Stevens in that oddly color, in that Halloween themed, I believe, uh, car right behind him. Yeah, I think Nick McKeeran and uh... sorry, Nick McKeeran and Dave Hansen got together. I think Dave ended up getting the uh, the the bad end of that deal, losing a couple of positions. Um... Oh. I thought I did, I thought I was going to see a wreck between Holmes and McNally, but they both just went off track to the same spot. I thought there was a wreck. I mean, I'm looking at the uh, looking up and down the grid. Both Steve Hefford and Jamie Ayres both gained ten positions. Rob Graham gained twelve positions uh, since the beginning of the race. Now he is towards the end of the the, the tail end of the pack, and he did qualify. Uh, quite low down, so it naturally was going to gain uh, quite a few positions. Uh, also, looks like Carl Jacquelet's having a tough time. Uh, he's lost another two positions. Three, I think he might be pulling into the pits, or he's had another issue, but uh, he's definitely not having a good day there. He wasn't struggling at all uh, in practice or yesterday, so he might be having some issues as we saw that absolute try of a send for Phil Regan. Uh, but unable to get that one uh, around the outside and spoon back up to the bow for third screen. Holmes, Ashton, and McNally, all the ex tight guys. I know they're all talking to each other in one voice channel, so they're all working who gets 130R this corner. But look at the back of that field as we see the Switz Cooper guys. They're going to be the uh, they're going to be the wild card of this situation because they don't know what they're going to try to do. I mean, you've also got Alex Zerny and Luke Cooper. Behind them is Adam Delmont in Excite, and then behind them, Stephen Baxter and Neil Carstensen in Swift Cooper. So it's like a double-decker sandwich of sweet Swift Cooper and Excite racing. Which is uh, the top two teams of the championship, but Excite is a top team, but they don't have the top driver of the championship as for last week for Jack Ashton, who had a very, very bad results, uh, bad results in all four of those races. It's he wasn't even. Sorry, go ahead. He wasn't even in the top three scoring positions from last week, which was the top three scoring was Cooper, McNally, and Delmont. As we get a great taste of the MX Live's rear bumper. I mean, I don't think they could have made that much closer if they tried. I mean, talk about a gearbox inspection. <laughs> 
Exactly. Uh, They're starting to pull away from Delmonta Cooper. Yeah, I think... I mean, I'm looking at that, I think Delmont and Cooper are driving right on the edge at the moment. Uh, and then looking just behind them, I think Carstensen and Baxter are doing exactly the same. Yeah, Cessnery tried to set it up the inside of Beard. Beard wasn't budging, and Cessnery had to hold it up a lot. That's gonna that's gonna really be hard on his exit speed as well. That's gonna bring Delmont right back on him. But well, this battle for first it for first is just an amazing pack, and I believe we have a car stopped under the bridge right now. That is uh Steve Hansford. He's turned around, and that is a lot. That a looks a like a wall impact. Now I, I'm no yes. mechanic or engineer. But I think that's a wall impact. Is it going to be the second Degna? It is the second Degna. Do we reckon it gets loose off the green? Yeah, there we go. Da -da 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 ah. Now, see, the thing is, looking at that, it hurts me personally looking at that because I do not know how many times I have done that. But the answer is too many. I did it yesterday. <laughs> Also, secondly, while we're talking about the track, I don't think I've ever once taken spoon curve right in my life. I don't think I've ever hit the apex on it, because every single time I drive it, I'm sure the track changes. There's some weird Japanese tsunami earthquake thing that happens, and for some reason, the track is just not as I remember it. Well, they were just hit by a typhoon. Yeah, iRacing is that much of a... There we go. iRacing is such a good sim, it then replicates... Um... <laughs> natural disasters onto racetracks well i do hope everyone in japan who's watching us here is okay from that i know the f1 weekend was well and no one was harmed there uh but it's always nice to see uh it, it is a weird quarter i must say because i've never taken it right it, it's, it's just i love suzuka as a track just as, as as a package it is real fun to drive but i think part of the reason why is that yeah it's it's not an easy track to get right it's definitely not an easy try. We saw Brian J. Hopes get a big sense of understeer, pop oversteer on mid corner through Del Up Corners. Now they're heading side by side to Dana. As Cesare almost turns him right there as they're starting to filter out through Dana once and twos. But with that mistake by Brian J. Hopes, that's pulled Jack Ashton out to a 1.2 second lead heading into the hairpin. Is there going to be a send by one of the Switz Cooper cars? Around the outside for Luke Cooper, but he's being forced out wide by Della, but Cooper's going to get him on the exit into 180R. He's, I think he's probably going to hold on to that. It just depends on what we're going to see at Spoon. Now, you know, who's going to be braver on the brakes? Well, we've seen Della do a few sends in his life, but we got two laps to go here in Suzuka. Well, maybe three laps to go, actually. And uh, also, while we've been talking, having a look at this, the Swift Cooper boys have been making moves. I mean, Alex Zerny, he's managed to split up that Excite Racing 1 through 4 pack. And then uh, right behind him, Luke Cooper's looking to do the exact same. We also got Niels Carlson leaning out the bigger train so far in this pack. And he's under pressure as we see Stephen Baxter going down the inside. Stuart Dick looking also down in there. McKenneran also looking try it. Stephen Dick and... Carlson going side by side through 130R. They are still safe. And it's Carlson going to send it up onto the inside of Stuart Dick. Dick around the outside. Carlson on the inside. Carlson gets a good exit. He's into the Astro Turf and Carlson holds it off. What a move by Niels Carlson. As they're going I'm three wide. wide again. It's a Sim Lab sandwich with asymmetric filling. I don't want to bite of that sandwich, honestly. But it looks like Adur Al Amri actually gets ahead of the two Sim Labs boys. Leading into turns one and two, but he gets onto the curb just a little bit. Watch out for the understeer. But he holds on to P13. Having a look at this, I'm just not sure how these Sim Labs boys are keeping the car on the track. They are throwing it tooth and nail into every corner. If I had an answer, I would be talking right now, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other person that I'm having a look at at the moment, Al Amri, he's our uh, lead pro driver. About six positions up on the next pro driver, which is Cullinan. That's why Amri's doing a, a very good job at the moment.
Yeah, the Dura Al Amri are our top amateur driver by a mile. As I saw Jamie Ayres getting very loose somewhere in the back there. <laughs> yeah, but we were excited to see a great midfield battle. We are absolutely seeing it as let's go back to the lead as the battle for purse has just absolutely left the entire rest of them. And it's a, and it's Jake a Jack Ashton once more and Brian J. Holmes. Yeah, it looks like Cerny's not managed to be able to hold on to third position. He's lost it a little bit, but you know, I mean, exciting racing have got the best of uh, best of both worlds here. Let's let Holmes and Ashton run away with it, and uh, Beard and Coop, uh, sorry, McNally and Beard can uh, tussle it out between them. Yeah, they also have Alex Cesare, who's just dropped onto the inside, going to 130R. He's going to pressure it for third place. He gets onto the curbs of 130R, hold it in there, buddy. Because you have that corner, but going to the triangle strand, who's going to be the last late breakers? Once again, a side-by-side -side move, but McNally dies up the inside of Accessory and defends one more lap into third position as we are under a white flag right now as this is a giant gaggle of cars. Who was that in the asymmetric car? It was a creature, I think. No, no, it wasn't. That's Emery. I mean, I don't think there was contact between him and Baxter. I think he managed to lift off just early enough to make with contact. Uh, but we'll see what happens here going into the first corner. Yeah, three wide on the very last lap in race number one. Stuart Dick up onto the inside. Emery swinged ahead of him. That is McFritchie going wide. Abdur Al Emery is also up in there. That orange asymmetric car. You can point him out by the green banner on top of his car as he's going side by side with Mick Ritchie, but Ador Al Eric gets a little bit of a punt from the Instagram car, and oh no! Uh, I have a horrible feeling. Uh, I think it looked, it looked to me like James McRitchie had to get on the brakes just a little bit. And uh, I don't think the car behind him, I didn't see who it was. I don't think they had, time, had a chance to react to it. Um, which, you know, I don't think there was any intent there. I think that was just... Uh, that was just racing, close racing, racing on the last lap. Close racing always on the last lap. Speaking of close racing between Jack Ashton and Brian James Holmes, these two are going to go crazy as I believe we have a bit of an off track as that's one of the Swift Cooper cars of Alex Cesare going off track in the hairpin. That might have been a fail send. As I believe the Excite car is letting him by. Don't know if he has damage or if that is just a gentleman thing. But Ashley Beard's also going slow as they're falling off from the front between Ashton and Brian James Holmes. And looks like uh, Luke Cooper's the leading Swift Cooper Esports to, uh, team driver at the moment. Uh, he's up into fourth. Uh, he's moved up from fifth since he started at the beginning of the race. Uh, I don't think there's going to be much to challenge Ashton and Holmes, though. Yeah, I know it's these two are going to run away for it and battle out for the lead in the final few corners. One last time to 130R. I mean, that's a that's a well-deserved win, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. It was a dominating win. They they qualified 1, 2, 3, and 4, and they just led the entire race, never breaking out of first and second uh, or just the top four. Jack Ashton takes the first win, followed by Brian J. Holmes and Adam McNally with Luke Cooper finishing in fourth. But it's a all-excite, eye-racing podium for race number one. Yeah, I mean, these, those boys drove really well there. It's a bit of a shame what happened with Alex Cerny. I, I didn't get to see what happens. I'm not entirely sure. Um, might have been a late send. Might have been that it, you know got tangled up in someone else's mess. Um, could have been anything, but um, I think <laughs> you know he still drove really well throughout that race. Nothing can take that away. Yeah, nothing can really take anything away from that result but it was just a dominating result as everyone's just going to finish out the race right now and i believe we have one last car left to finish and that is uh the beaten up car steve cooley but jack ashton is going to pull off and i think he's going to give us a little bit of show the world's smallest burner ah there we go ah, there we go <laughs> i thought that's all we were getting i was just like come on <laughs> shift it into first put the pedal down <laughs> But yeah, after four like tough races yesterday, uh, last week in Brands Hatch, 
This is a well-deserved victory for him. And I believe everyone's just gone in front of Steven Cooley, who's just coming across the line right now. Almost caused an instant at the very end. But as the race finishes up, here are our results for race number one. Jack Ashton takes it away, followed by Brian J. Holmes. Adam McNally in third to an all-excite iRacing podium. They're followed up by Luke Cooper, Adam Delmont, Alex Cesare, Ashley Beard, Niels Carlson, Steven Baxter, Super Dick, Matthew Emery, Abdur Al Emery, Dave Hansen, Steve Heffer, Vuta Van Essen, Ralph Colliam, Nick McKeeran, Kip Stevens in 18th place. Following up in 19th is Carl Hardy, Jamie Ayers, Rob Graham, Benjamin Mias, Peter Van Gool, Joe McDonald, Martin Sampson, Phil Regan, Liam Silkstone, and Scott Malcolm in 28th. There he's followed up by Dale Benison, Jerome Ursa, David Ayers, Carl, Craig Jones, Max Wright, Carl Jacqueline, Andy Maxwell, Steve Van Cooley, James McRitchie, and Steve Hansford in 30th place. And 39th, it's Charles Calvin and Adrian Hedy finishing up the grid. And now I time it. Now it's time to bring Sammy up to spin that wheel. Uh, spin our wheel. The wheel is on your screen right now. So let's go ahead and do it. Well, this is unusual. I don't know what's going on with the wheel, but we are only getting 15. Alright, 15 on the wheel. This is... Not the biggest number that we get, so our top 15 are going to be reversed on the grid. So it's going to be a complete flip of the Pro Series, but I believe one amateur is going to be on there. So... Yeah, uh, Alemi, right? Yes, Al Amory is going to be the only amateur in that top grid, and he's going to be near the front um, as I'm trying to find whoever finished 15th last. But as we... I believe that will be Adam... That's not Adam Delmont. It, oh, it's going to be Vutavan S is starting up on the front row. All right. Well, after a great race, what I, I hope you guys are excited because race two is coming up after this small break.
Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have. The Chili Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the holy grail. The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $100,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing.
Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have. The Chili Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the holy grail. Howdy, 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 and welcome back to the BSR FX5 Pro Series. After the wheel spun a lackluster 15, Wouta Van Essen is starting up on pole for race number two. He's followed up by Steve Hefford, Dave Hampson, Abdur Al Amri, Matthew Emery. Wow. Stuart Dick, Stephen Baxter, Niels Gosson, Ashley Beard, Alex Ezri. Adam Delwatt, Luke Cooper in 12th place. Following them is Adam McNally, Brian J. Holmes, Jack Ashton, Ralph Colham, Nick McCurran, Kip Stevens, Carl Hardy, Jimmy Ayers, Rob Graham, Benjamin Mias, Peter Van Gool, and Joe McDonald is our top 24 drivers as we're going to move through the rest of the grid. JJ, how do you feel for this race? Yeah, I think with the reverse grid on this one, I'm, I'm looking at Al Amri in P4. I reckon he's he might be a bit of a dark horse. I'm just very excited to see uh, what what the Excite Boys as Green Flag drops it and away we go as I see Joe McDonald already getting an amazing start back in the field in that uh, black, black, red, and blue grid. But look at the front. Puta Van Essen holding off Steve Hefford down the inside of that Momo car. And Steve Hefford trying to push up in any way that he can. But what a jump that he got. Yeah, I was going to say, there was definitely some uh, rally cross action going on in the middle of there where that starts. I think uh, we once again managed to get through pretty clean out of T1. As that's one of the Excite cars going very slowly. 
I've got caught up in something earlier, or maybe just got a little bit loose and didn't quite get a chance to see. Oh no! Oh, no. I'm a lot curved in the middle of the track. It's Dave Hampson. Oh, and then there's someone behind him as well. Uh, Carl Hardy. Carl Hardy's oh. made a spin in front of him. Well, we didn't have a lap one incident last time. Now we do. Looks like Hefford's putting a move around the outside of the hairpin. Yeah. It doesn't quite... No, uh, I didn't quite get enough of a run to be able to make it stick. Uh, I think Essen did a great job of running him wide there, so we cut off any chances of a run. Yeah, Mutavin Essen. He's going to have a run through 180R now. He's looking up to the inside. Can he get it? I am not sure. He does? Oh, that was a solid move there. And looking at the rest of the pack here, and I mean, Al Amri, he's down into P7. Uh, he has lost seven positions from, um, I think he started in P4. Um, there's a little bit of a train holding up behind him, but uh, it's still, you know what, uh, I, I can count. There's still eight positions in front of uh, Kalanan as he falls back just another one uh, as we Ash head into 130R. Yeah, Ashley Beard sneaking ahead of the door, Al Amri. And I really wanted to see the uh, Excite cars move their way up through the top 15 of the field because they were at the top four, so they're going to be starting uh, from 15th all the way down to uh, 14th. Wait, 11. There we go. Um, I mean, I I'm looking at Alex math, Zern, I swear. Well. That's all right. Don't worry about it. I think Alex Zern is doing a really good job at the moment uh, of uh, bringing Luke Cooper and the rest of the Sport, uh, Swift Cooper Esports team forward as we also see um, a bit of a moment into the first corner. A little bit of a first corner. Stewart did try to almost push off, his, push off uh, Baxter off the track a little bit, but he let him back in, which is a very nice thing to do. And um, how did Van? Oh, Dale Benison's off. Um, let me just. Yeah, how did Van Essen get back into P5? He was battling with Hefford for P1. I, I didn't see that. That is confusing. I think it. I think it happened at Cassio Cup. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so he's fallen back. Steve Hefford now leading uh, in the Sim Labs car. We've got Sim Labs leading, followed by. Uh, Asymmetrics, Matthew Emery, and Swift Cooper Esports, Stephen Baxter. Uh, rounding a, a very uh, diverse podium that we've got at the moment. It looks like that's the first of our, not the first of our exact cars, uh, but it looks like Adam Delmott's making a bit of a charge going forward. Uh, Alex Zerny's now getting up to our uh, lead AM driver, Al Amri. And uh, Alex Zerny, he's our Swift Cooper Esports. Uh, I think he finished fourth at the end of the last race. Am I right in saying Oh, that? hit oh, at the no. front, hit at the front. Emery and Hefford tapped in Spoon. And Stephen Baxter now retakes the lead of the, of race number two. But absolutely disastrous. Hefford and Emery got into the side of each other. And Emery just... Ended up the worst of that is Karshaw Fletcher also in Spoon. Andy Maxwell's turn around. Yeah, that looks like a severely damaged car. There. This is Andy Maxwell's issue. As oh, that's a spin and a half, and that was James McRitchie. As oh, that's also a big hit. There's another car. Who did he ping there? Yeah, I was gonna say who did he ping? Let me have a look. Who's down in the? That might. My... It was I a year on racing. Carl Jacqueline. Don't oh, tell me that's God. Carl Jacquelet again. Uh, no, I think I saw Carl Jacquelet further up the field. Oh, no, it was Carl Jacquelet. It was. Oh, that is so... Uh, no, he's off the track. Yeah, he's in the pits. Oh, that's unfortunate. Two races in a row for Carl Jacquelet being involved. We're looking at Kip Stevens up onto the inside of... The Sim Labs car side by side. They are as Kip Stevens trying to hold it around the inside of the Eskers. Yes, he does get it on Jamie Ayers. A bit of a, a Sim Lab train going on behind him. I do love those paints, I've got with me. It, it's very unique. 
definitely having a look through. I mean, Al Emery, he's up into P5 after sort of uh, the shenanigans that we saw at the end of the last lap. We've seen ja uh, Jamie Ayres all over the back of Kip Stevens uh, with Peter Van Gaal <laughs> keeping Jamie honest. No, we got a car off track in Dunlop Curve. That's Liam Silkstone in that Castrol Edge uh, car that we were talking about earlier. But that's very unfortunate for him getting just loose. And that is a... He's turning all the way right to go straight. That is one damaged car. Yeah, I think uh, I think that one might have a bit of an impact on your uh, on your lap times there. Yeah, it's not turning left. Oh, 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 well, now oh! It's turning left far oh. too much. Well, he didn't flip it. There you go. Ten points for star. Uh, we go back to uh, Stuart Dick, who's uh, our second place car following Baxter. Uh, Carstensen and Beard are chasing down. Al Emery's back into Carlson. P5, and he's holding off Van Essen, which is a really good job by him. Carlson up the end, inside of Dick. Dick goes wide. Carlson stays up to the inside. Beard going to try and take it down the middle. Dick up onto the inside. Side by side, they go into the triangle chicane, and Stuart Dick gets P2. But... He goes wide a little bit, goes a little bit off track. It looks like Carlson is going to have the exit on Stuart Dick. Heels crossing up the inside. Side by side they go across the line for another lap. And now we got a little bit of a bump train right here. They were bump drafting to Monza, as we saw the first time. But Niels Carlson and Ashley Beard and Ador Al Amri all passing Stuart Dick as they go side by side into turn one and two. I think I'm going to look through here. Uh, looking at our Cooper Esports boy, he's making a, a hard drive for it. We are seeing the Excite boys get a little bit more split up than we were previously. Ashley Beard, our leaving Excite driver, uh, followed by Adam Delmont. And then we've got a bit of a train of uh, Ashton Holmes and McNally falling in behind as they've got to make their way through the grid. Uh, Alex Cerny and Luke Cooper having a bit of a challenge trying to keep up with the Excite boys, but they've still got time. They've still got another, uh, another four laps where they could be making up positions. Definitely another four laps ready to do anything that they want, but it's all about moving up as fast as you can, avoiding incidents, and then maybe not being the cause of an incident, because, oh, that's one of the Switz Coop, that's one of the Excite cars getting loose. That was Brian J. Holmes off the exit of Dangna 2. Yeah, that's Ralph Collingham making a great show for himself. Moving up to the inside, but Holmes around the outside. Oh, that was a little bit of a smack in the was, front. Yeah, it was a bit of a chop there, and he looks like he's going to suffer from it as Jamie Ayres uh, pushes through the gap between him with uh, Jack Ashton, uh, I believe, following uh, in suit. It looks like that Simlab train has finally been broken up, uh, but Jamie Ayres is starting to lead the way for his boys. Yeah, Jack Ashton, surprising to see him all the way down at 13th place. He would have started in 15th, but he just haven't had anything to do. Was, oh, we got Joe McDonald spinning around. And that is a wreck. Oh, that's car on its roof. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's Martin Simpson. Uh, oh, sorry, Sam Martin Sampson. Uh, not looking the right way. Yeah, Martin stands for Team Ultimate. Uh, knock Hill as... Does he? Oh! Yeah, not much Martin could have done about that, I don't think. Yeah, that was just Joe McDonald snapping out of that issue and then uh, snapping into Samson as he goes into the wall and onto his roof. Thank goodness this is a sim. <laughs> yeah, does he have a motion rig? Does he have VR? But uh, looking at this, look at Al Amri up into P3. Ah, uh, he was in P3 for a second. For a second, well, he's, he was there. He's battling for P3. See Carlson, but Carlson being one of the top pro drivers, he is definitely starting to going to try to pull away from Al Amri. But Amri, we've seen him chopping up here with the pros before, and I haven't talked to him about this track, but I believe he this is one of his favorite tracks. Yeah, and I think also uh, looking a bit further downfield, I think Ruta Van Essen might have had an issue. He's down nine positions. He's in uh, P10 at the moment after he was battling for first with Steve Hefford uh, towards the beginning of the race. I think I see some front end damage 
Um, I might be wrong. It might be the way that I'm looking oh. at it. As I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, that's probably a car that's not doing him any favours at the moment. Yeah, for the damage. A, I don't see any suspension damage, but it's definitely affecting his top end speed. Yeah, I think. I mean, looking at how loose that thing's getting off the corners, um, I think something happened. And I mean, you don't get that front end damage for uh, for no reason. So I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but unfortunate for Van Essen as he put up a great fight as we're seeing Carstensen go to the inside of Spoon. No, that's Al Emery. Al Emery sending it into third place on Spoon. We've seen that move not work as Carlson gets into the back pa quarter panel of Al Emery. Al Emery is starting leading off the Switz Cooper gyro of Niels Carlson. Also, Adam Delbot's on the inside of Carlson and Al Emery. Who's going to have the best run out of these two? Carlson's actually bump drafting Emery down the back straight. Are we going to see an amateur on the podium of the... Uh at the end of this race as they're going to send it too wide. Oh, there's a there's little, little bit of bit drift. Loose. There was a little bit of a drift from Al Airy as Adam Delmont takes P3. Al Airy up onto the inside of Carlson once more, but Al Airy's going to hold it around the outside of Carlson, which switches back to the inside right now for the final curve. And Al Airy holding it up for P5. And look at this train that Al Airy is leading. Yeah, I mean, uh, Al Amri's doing a, a great job of fighting for it here. I mean, once again, put down to the fact that Al Amri is 11 positions in front of his next amateur rival. 10 positions now. Uh, Steve Gullinan in uh, 15th place. Oh, sorry, Ralph Gullinan. Yeah. Uh, in uh, 15th place, uh, who's also dropped down 16th. And Al Amri seems to be getting freight trained a little bit down now. Um, it's very easy to do as he just manages to slot back in. Uh, you get out of file of that draft, and then it's just very easy to kind of lose position after position. Uh, oh, you just get off wide in the S. I must say, if you get off wide in the S, it's, it's going to be very hard to get back in line, especially if you're in a pack uh, situation such as these MX-5s love to run in, uh, which is just honestly so what makes this series awesome because everyone's on a road course, pack racing on a road course. Who doesn't want to see that? As look up to the inside, that's Brian J. Holmes trying to make it his way on Super Tank, who's been having a tough race. Uh, Stewart has, as Brian J. Holmes moved up four places. Oh no, Futaman S is around again. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him getting loose for a few just, laps just, now. Oh, oh that got is helped along by Carstensen. Oh, was that Cullingham? Yeah, Cullingham <laughs> punted him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't really expect a stationary car facing the wrong way when you come into the second deck, I have to admit. That's not something I'm particularly uh, uh, expecting most of the time. But uh, having a look through, uh, Ralph Gunnan seems to be okay at the moment. Maybe lost a bit of top end as Van Gaal seems to be making a move uh, going through 180R or 200R or whatever they want to call it these days. 180R. But Ralph Gunnan not giving up, sends it up onto the spoon. But that damage, he's definitely has to, having some turning issues. So he goes wide, and he's trying to keep that car on track, but he goes off track, riding up onto the skirt. Saw a few sparks pop out from under his car, and that is Peter Van Gool and Niels Carlsen pushing ahead in the SimLab train. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a, a really good job at the moment. We've seen Stephen Baxter getting a little bit of pressure from Beard behind him. Uh, looking at the team driving that's going on, uh, at the moment, Excite seems to have managed to sort of push their way back to top form again. Uh, we've got Beard and Delmont, you know, they seem to be stepping back onto the podium. Uh, and they've still got another two laps to try and make it work as Beard's threatening the position. Yeah, Beard trying to get into P1, trying to make it a Excite sweep of the top podium in all three races. We, all, we sometimes saw this where the same driver has won all four races. And I am going to be very excited. I would be very excited if this happens. Yeah, I think, uh, ooh, ooh, too ooh. wide going through the S corners, boys. Baxter and Beard battling out for first place. Beard up onto the long inside and holding off Beard behind him. But Baxter leading it out for P1 so far with two laps to go. So they're kind of up to take us one and two. Might see him get this. I think Beard's biding his time, waiting for the last lap, putting moves in, making him feel threatened, uh, but not quite ready to commit to the line just yet. They do have quite a big lead uh, from Delman and Cerny, who are a little bit of a ways behind him, so they've got some time to play with. I don't think they're going to be able to uh, close in that gap, as we're seeing Nils Carstensen 
trying to put a move on the inside, thinking better of it as he goes into the hairpin, backing everyone oh, up behind him, and it looks like Jamie Ayers got him! Jamie Ayers gets to the sewer tick, and sewer tick is spun around by Kip Stevens, and he's stuck in the middle off, off to the exit, so that's only only avoiding sewer tick, but sewer tick, oh, who spun up the wheels too much, and he's now sitting onto the inside, oh, that car damaged. is, that car is damaged all over the place, it's just the back rear end though, so he shouldn't have damn. that is a dead engine. No, he's still got drive. I think it's just spinning on the spinning on point like a like a coin. Um, but luckily he's got off the track, so we don't have to worry too much about him taking out another driver. Stephen Baxter looking through the outside of 130R. We've seen that move work uh, once or twice earlier on in the race. Uh, Van Essen tried to make it work. We've got a little bit loose this time. Baxter can make it work, but is he going to be able to hold it into the Casio Triangle? Not that I can, not that I know of. But Steven Baxter, not the best exit as we see Ashley Beer. Oh my oh, no. goodness! And he's, who's he collecting? Oh, I, know, I think he's alright. That was one Baxter's of... Baxter's out the race, but I thought he Delmar. collected someone with him. That was Ed out... That was, uh... Believe it, X... That might have been Delmont's car that he rolled on top of. And that's paved the way for Cerny to get into P1. What have we just witnessed? Uh, I think we just witnessed Excite potentially lose their chance at winning this race. Uh, we've still got Beard and Delmont chasing Cerny down, and they've only got one lap left to do it. McNally following in close behind. Uh, so they've got to make their moves pretty quickly as we see Stephen Baxter having some issues. Oh, that's very unfortunate for the Switz Cooper Esports driver. Here's a replay of Adam Delmont. It was Adam Delmont who was got caught under that. And Adam Delmont is one of the Excite cars up at the front. So, Alex Cesare has all, has all the cards in his favor because the two Excite cars have damage. And I think, to be honest, with the way Sony has been driving, as we're seeing one other Swift Cooper eSport car behind, uh, I believe that would have been Luke Cooper behind him. Uh, having, getting a little bit loose coming out of the second Degna. Uh, not entirely sure whether he managed to hold, yeah, he managed to hold it, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, look at the uh, sim labs. Ooh, Jimmy errors a little bit of bump and run from Jack Ashton trying to get around the sim labs driver. Back up to the valve in front on the very last lap. One last time going to Spoon. Alex Desiree defending up onto the inside. Ashley Beard around the outside, not going to try to make it. Uh, not going to make it through there into the first part of Spoon, but onto the back stretch now. Where is Cessnery going to put his car? Is he going to keep onto that inside line? Yes, he is. Ashley Beard around the outside. Ladies and gentlemen, bring out the poggers. It's about to be popping. As these two are going side by side through 130R. Beard, Cessnery, and Delmont. Beard leads him out through 130R. Delmont taking the long way around. Beard up into the inside, going to the triangle chain. Who's going to have the best of exits? It's going to be all into the exits time. Who's going to have it going into race number two? I think I've, I think the damage that Beard got from last time was not suspicious enough as Ashley Beard takes race number two ahead of Alex Cessnery and Adam Delmont. Yeah, it was a really good team. Oh, no, it looks like Peter Van Gool's round. Oh, that's unfortunate Van Gool. But it's another win for Excite Racing. But I mean, that I was really this, good, uh, good team driving there. I believe the stewards might have a say in uh, this race result, though. I mean, we'll have to see what happens in the uh, in the post-race scenario. One thing that I definitely saw there with uh, Beard and Delmont working to uh, working together, uh, giving Beard the draft to go around the outside of uh, 130R. Really, really managed to do a good job of pulling that off. It's not a particularly uh, easy task uh, to make that succeed. Yeah, but it's Ashley Beard taking P1. Uh, congrats to them, but with, with that last quarter incident of the on lap seven, we'll, we're definitely going to have to see what, what's going to happen uh, to them. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was anything intentional from what I could see that replay. Uh, just like I got a little bit tied up. And it uh, looks like we've got our race results. If you want to walk us through our final fixtures for the moment. 
Sure, it's Beard taking the win for Excite Racing, followed by Alex Cesare and Adam Delmont. Followed by Adam McNally, Brian J. Holmes, Niels Gossett, Luke Cooper, Jack Ashton, Jamie Harris, Abdur, Al Amory, Steve Hefford, Kip Stevens, Nick McKeeran, Ralph Colliam, Matthew Emery, James McRitchie, P Benjamin Mias, Peter Van Gool in 18th. Followed up in 19th, it's Craig Jones, Max Wright, Phil Regan, Scott Malcolm, Carl Hardy, Steve Van Gooley, Bill McDonald, Rob Graham, Charles Kellyman, and Jerome Ernstham in 28th. And 29th spot, it's David Ayers, Steve Hansford, Steven Baxter, Stuart Dick, Vutovan Essen, who unfortunately finished a few laps down after his incidents. Andy Maxwell, Martin Sanson, Dave Hampson, Liam Silkstone, and Dale Benison in 38th spot, followed up by Dale Benison and Carl. Oh, just Carl Jacquelet. I thought we had 40. I think we missed out on someone in the last race. Uh, I didn't see who it was, but I think someone uh, didn't get a chance to join. Uh, didn't see who it was, though. Well, we do have a 15-minute, like, break period. But after a very chaotic race, too, let's see what race three brings us. But first, let's bring in Sammy to spin that wheel. Yeah, the wheel is on your screen. And that was a really great race, I think. So let's see if we can get more of that. The wheel is spinning, and where to stop? You know what? The wheel has returned. It is full minus two. All right, all right, all right. Full minus two. So that is going to bring uh thirty. I can math. I swear. That's all right. I'm having to look through who. How many did we have finish on non the lead lap? I think we had three. I believe it was the bottom seven. You know what? Oh, Let's just go to the one. very bottom of the results and find this out for ourselves. Bang! There you go. Brian James Holmes. I'm <laughs> just looking at the results on my own. Brian James Holmes finishes plus minus one laps. I don't think it's working at the moment. <laughs> also, shout out to the Lionheart Racing Series. What's that wheel mean? It this, it determines the grid for the results uh, for the starting grid for next race. Uh, we have four races here. So the, so the way the, the wheel works, minus four, it means minus four for the bottom, full reverse, except for the very bottom four. Uh, full 50, full reverse. 15, like we had in the first race, top 15 get reversed around. It's our own little wheel of chaos and we certainly love it. And after the wheel spun a minus two, we're gonna get ready up for race number three after this short break.
Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have. The Chili Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the holy grail. The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $100,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing.
growing up as a kid in Oklahoma where I'm And we are back for the BSR MX5 Pro Series. We're underneath the dark clouds of Suzuka. It's not quite nighttime yet because this is race number three. And since uh, Japan, Suzuka has a uh, proper nighting, night lighting conditions, uh, race number four should be good. But it was almost a full re reverse grid last time. So, JJ. What are you looking forward to in race number three? I think so far we've had some pretty good action up and down the field all the way through the races. Uh, we've had some uh, some interesting moments as the races have seemed to gone on. And I think that now that we've got reverse grid, uh, it's a little bit bigger than the last time. Uh, I don't think those Excite boys are going to find it quite as easy as maybe they did last time. They're going to have to push their way a bit forward. So middle of the pack's definitely going to be where a lot of the action is starting off this race. Always middle pack somewhere to look up. I'm always I'm kind of looking forward to the front of the pack to see the uh, guys who didn't have the best races uh, in race number one and two. See if they can fight their way and hold their ground up into uh, up throughout this race. Because remember, top of the grid is where most of the uh, guys who didn't have the best races who ended up on the roof last time, and we saw up on the roof and then a lot of cars who had a lot of damage Vutim and S started up on pole and he didn't have he didn't have a great race because he had a bit of damage so it's gonna be very very interesting to see what happens when we go racing for race number three yeah I think also like looking at some of the some of the names where things have been a little bit different today uh Carl Jacquelette he really hasn't had the greatest of starts tonight both races ended up uh getting a bit of a biff uh, and so we'll have to see what the rest of the team can uh, can bring forward. Well, as the cars are starting to grid up, let's bring up the starting race grid. And it's David Ayers starting up on pole for result clothing. And it's an all amateur top 10 followed up by Jerome Ersom, Carl Kellyman, uh, Charles Kellyman, I'm sorry. Uh, Rob Graham, Joe McDonald, Stephen Cooley, Carl Hardy, Scott Malcolm, Phil Regan, Max Wright, and Craig Jones, your top 11. He's followed up by Peter Van Gool in 12th. Right behind him is Benjamin Mias, James McRitchie, Matthew Emery, Ralph Kelly, have Nick McKeeran, Kip Stevens, Steve Hefford, Abdur Al Amory. We saw a lot of great stuff from him until the very end of that race. Uh, Steve Hefford 
Jamie Ayers up in 20th place as the lights are coming on. And we're getting ready to go racing here in Suzuka for race number three of the BSR MX5 Pro Series. It's a great start by Stephen Baxter and Stuart Dick. A very bad start for Steve Hansford, who's fallen down five places already. The very start, Scott Malcolm, Max Wright falling down in a little position. Rob Graham, our high stop over. Oh, that's Rob calling him. Yeah, Matthew Emery's got caught up in that. Oh, man. Andy Maxwell, Ralph Callanan. Nils Carstensen, that was that was a much bigger, much bigger incident than I think it really let on. There's still cars only just rejoining the track. I'm uh, really not sure what happened there, but it didn't seem to end too well. Oh, and don't forget, oh it was Peter Van Gaul, uh eats a bit of cement there alongside Scott Malcolm, by the looks of it, who's just rejoining the track now. Yeah, Scott Malcolm. Now they've got to wait for the guys who spun up before to get back on. This is, uh, I think, this is not definitely the not the that we've had. To He's definitely not using that cheery face right there. Let's ride with Matthew Emery, who looks a lot like Scott Malcolm right there. As uh, okay, Jamie Ayers got caught up in that. He got a little bit loose. I see even think that's Hampson or Baxter. I couldn't see which one it was. Uh, yellow Sim Labs car. No, can't see. Uh, Steve Hefford, there we go. Uh, I think he got caught up a little bit inside that as well as we're seeing. I think we're back live uh, and we've got another car slow. It's the number 26 of, where are we? Was it the number 28? That might have been actually be the next up racing team, actually. Uh, Steve Hefford managed to rejoin the track back in 16th. Um, as we're seeing the pros now starting to make their way up into the amateur classes. Yeah, definitely a fight up at front as Jerome Ursum, who looks a lot like Jack Ashton, uh, is leading out the field. Yeah, I mean, I'm also looking at the top 10 of the drivers. We've, we're starting to see him pick off. Oh, there's oh. An, is that another one? That's actually be a race number two winner. Spun around at the end, eggs in a spoon. Back there. I'm not entirely sure what happened uh, with that. Look, Just there is a there. lot of incidents and cars separated. That's at least... Seven cards, I believe, spun as Phil Regan spun around. And Jerome as well as, that as well. You know what? I think I think this reverse grid's really starting to play havoc at the moment. You're getting these fast at the back, all chasing for their way through the front. They all want to be in front of each other. Uh, and then they've got the, the amateur guys in front. They're trying to pass through as well. So uh, a lot of the time it leads to sort of two, three wide corners. And Suzuka, you can do it. It's just whether you'll make it work. This has been a chaotic, chaotic start uh, for the amateur start of the field. So we're looking up at the grid. You can see how much spread out they are, as I believe there's a car off in the S-curves once more. And it's Adam McNally, and he just rejoins right ahead as Liam Silkstone just rides on the side of him. And McNally's going to be going slow. Hopefully he stays offline and doesn't cut anyone off. Back up front between Graham and Ayers side by side. We see David Ayers has a lot of damage on that back end. So he goes a little bit of graveling out of Dagna 1 going to Dagna 2. All over the back has a lot of cars going wide. Having a look through the rest of the field at the moment. And to be honest, looking at it, James McChristie's had James McRitchie. See, oh, spoke a little bit too soon. Looks like he got into... Uh, Oh, no, no, Ooh. no. That's very unlucky for Charles Kellerman there. Uh, looks like Max Wright got into the back of him. And we did see the orange Simlab car. I'm not sure who that would have been. Potentially it's McKieran. McKieran. Yeah, it was McKieran. Uh, we also got into the side of it. it seems to be running okay there. Or, 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 okay, though. Sorry. Or uh, at least maintaining mate, uh, pace with Hefford as we see, see Al Amri. Uh, I think maybe make, let that move... Uh, go by a little bit easily there, but uh, you know, he's still uh, doing pretty well. And it looks like Urson's. Oh no, wait, we hear he was damaged earlier from the previous incident, actually. Yeah, Spoon is very deadly to these cars. And if you already have damage, it's very tough to. It was. If it was tough for us to actually hit the eight, this corner right, it's double tough to do it with a damaged car as the leaders are heading into the triangle again once more. Rob Graham leading out as James McRitchie is holding it off in second ahead of David Ayers and Joe McDonald. McRitchie, oh my oh. goodness. 
that was not a good that was not a good situation coming into the Casio triangle. Stephen Cooley takes the real negative end of that. And we see another car slow in front of him. I'm not sure who it was. It was a it looked like a Swift uh, Swift Cooper Esports car. It might have been Alex Zerny, uh, who got a little bit loose coming out of that. But I tell you what, I like what McRitchie's doing at the moment. He's in P2. He's pulling it away. If he can get in front of Graham, try and get the two of them to tag up together, build up enough of a gap that they start to run away from it. They don't need to worry too much about the Excite cars, which are starting to creep in. Yeah, the Excite cars are closing in. Here's a replay of this giant uh, pack incident. That was a year one car being popped up by Craig Jones, and then Jones gets popped into the year one car, and Ow. Yeah, I think the uh, the number 60 there of Phil Regan, he really sent it in late there. Uh, didn't really get a good angle on where that, like, sorry, didn't get, didn't, uh, like, managed to see whether uh, Craig Jones was going a bit of a rally crossing there. I uh, didn't really get to see whether he was uh, alongside enough to really challenge for it, as Craig Jones is really making the rally cross move go through there. I think he just doesn't want to rejoin the track ahead of other people, which I'm totally on board for. Oh. Safe driving route. Oh, no, that's David Ayers in the wall. But I don't even know. It I, did he really get loose? I think it did. That's the, only, that's the only excuse why he would be there. You see his back end actually bent in a lot, so I believe he might have got punted oh, a little bit going to that corner. Oh, yeah. But hey-ho, uh, looking at the drivers that we do have at the moment, a lot of the guys, as expected, have made some great gains. Stuart Dix gained 21 positions from the beginning. I believe he's our biggest mover and shaker. Actually, no, currently tied with, guess who? Carl Jacolette making his way from the back. Trying to make a redemption run after the first oh, they're race. Oh, the front. front. And that's not the way that you want to go through there. Mitch Ritchie and Graham bumping and rubbing at the front. But Mitch Ritchie on the inside of 130R. Is Graham going to try anything to fight back through? No, he's not going into the triangle skid. But with four laps, <laughs> it's surprising that we had all this incident. We aren't even halfway through the race yet. Yeah, I mean, Graham, I'm... Um, oh, there was Luke somebody Cooper backwards there. That was Luke, Luke Cooper. Cooper. Jinxie will be a coke. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what happened with him. Mate, Casio Triangle is really being uh, lethal to some of the drivers tonight. And we've seen more incidents in the past two laps at that one corner uh, than I think most of the other races put together. Yeah, all the other... to Luke Cooper. The most we had was three incidents last time. This is Luke Cooper going to the chicane. Is there? Oh, that's Ooh. a breaking zone. Now, that was a spin. Was, two questions. Was he pushed or did he yes. have a different incident? Oh, he, did, did he get a little bit of a helping hand from inside earlier on? Yes, this is a sit lap. Jamie Ayers. It, it, I believe this might have been Jamie Ayers up onto the inside. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we've uh, there's a few <laughs> there's a few incidences of that happening in real life that uh, come to mind. Um, but but uh, moving on, it's an off-track fest here in uh, Suzuka right now. As we were saying, this there have been there's been multiple incidents on each lap so far. And last race we only had three, and the first race I think we only had one. As we look at this heat of battle between Jack Ashton and Steve Heffer. Heffer drove onto the inside, Ashton around the outside. Ashton, he had that longer line. He's gonna have the exit on Heffer, and Ashton makes the move up into P7. Ashton, up 15 spots. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's done a, a really good drive here. Also, I'm having a look at uh, some of the Simlabs boys and just looking at sort of like the teams at the moment, trying to get a feel for where everyone is. Swift Cooper Esports with Kip Stevens up into P4. Uh, Simlabs, uh, Simlab Racing, their best driver, Nick McKieran up into P6. And Excite Racing is Jack, a uh, Jack Ashton uh, into P7. He's our, uh, I believe our Australian or, or, or Kiwi driver, I can't which one. Did, I did look at it before this race. I did mean to commit that one to memory. My apologies there. Uh, but uh, I'm also just having a look, and I want to draw attention back again to uh, McRitchie and Graham, who are going on at the front. Now, these two drivers, I really feel like they just need to saddle up and drive together. Uh, the main reason why is Graham has so much to lose right now. He's got Stevens coming in from behind, McDonald, who he is fighting, McDonald, sorry, who he is fighting for position uh, in the AM Cup. 
Graham doesn't gain anything if he passes McRitchie. Just stay behind him and push the two of you to a victory. Yeah, sit in that draft, but don't count out the American Joe McDonald. No bias there for me. Um, he is sitting right behind him and getting all that draft, and he is definitely closing in on McDonald. He also has Kip Stevens right behind him. Uh, Kip Stevens in that special Switz Cooper Esports car uh, in the Tune livery. Um, I believe that is for one of our one of my friends in the Amateur Cup of Alan Tunes car. Hey, there you go. I mean, I'm trying to have a look through uh, at the moment. I just want to have a look. Biggest mover and shaker. 23 position Stuart Dick, I think. The title at the moment goes to him. Yeah, I think he's having a good job. Um, having a look through Carl Jacquelet. Where is he at the moment? Scanning through the grid. Can't see him towards the bottom. So I think he's doing okay at the moment. Having a trouble. Uh, there we go. P15. There we go. So he is doing pretty well at the moment. Up 23 positions from the beginning of the race along with Stuart Dick. Uh, so tied. Sorry, I misspoke earlier. For biggest mover and shaker. Uh, Carl Jacquelet has been a really strong contender over the past few races. As Joe McDonald's looking slow. Is that a slow down? No, nah, is this that a slow just exit? Like, no. I think that might have been... I think, to be honest, McDonald's probably doing what Graham should be doing. Falling behind the pro, let him drag me to the front and then see if I can get Graham uh, later on. I don't think that's a bad strategy. Running on board, Joe McDonald right behind Kip Stevens. Kip Stevens definitely being the workhorse for Joe. And Joe is, if this is actually very smart for Joe, I would have, I would probably be doing the exact same thing, sitting behind Kip Stevens, learning his lines, letting him hold me closer and closer to Rob Graham. Oh no, not if that happens, Kip Stevens loses it in the triangle chain. And that's disastrous if you were Joe McDonald, he was caught up right there. It looks like that would have been all said and done, but unfortunately, Kit Stevens lost it going into out of the corner of the triangle skate and just spun right ahead of Joe McDonald, and who's still in third place, but he, he does not have the pace to close in on Graham anymore. Carl Hardy getting very loose coming out of the... He's going to lose the position. Do McKieran will have to see if he can hold it off him with the S-curves. He just manages to make it stick. Uh, actually, really nice move there by McKieran as he slots in here in front of Hardy. McRitchie doesn't look like he's going to see that much of a challenge for the rest of the race for his uh, winning position unless we see McKieran push forward. But Jack Ashton, you can also never count him out. He's still making moves. He's in P6 at the moment. And it looks like he's going to see if he can leapfrog up in front of uh, Hardy to try and follow McKieran through. I think we've got a, a nice split of pro and amateur drivers at the moment, as you can see along the left side of the screen. For those of us joining us maybe for the first time, uh, green indicates our amateur class drivers and blue oh, indicates our pro class drivers. Here comes Jack Ashton up the inside of Carl Hardy. Carl Hardy went a lot wide. But Jack Aston, that is one battered front end. He's going to be struggling with a lot of front end pace, but the draft that he's getting from cars all around him is going to help him down the front end pace, but I am not sure. I think, to be honest, if he can close the gap to McKieran, I think he'll be okay. I think if he can slot him behind him, whatever he's losing, he's going to gain back in anyway. So I don't think that's too much to worry about. Uh, that decision will really be made between McKieran and McDonald. Uh, as to uh, what happens going on here is to think we're going to see McKieran go down the inside of 130R if he can make it. Looks like he's got the pace. And I forgot how long this back straight was. <laughs> I think he's definitely got it. There you go. That was a, that was a nice move by McKieran there. Uh, not, always, not always able to make that move stick. And I don't think McDonald's going to uh, challenge for it, although he does get pretty close. Uh, and now it's going to be up to Ashton to follow him through. I mean, Jack Ashton's just had a really good drive so far. Uh, I think looking at he's up 17 positions. I know we've got a couple of drivers like Carl Jacquelet, 
up 26 positions. He's done a really good job. Um, Ashton, though, is looking like he's going to take yet another position, corner after corner, up into uh, P4 at the moment. Uh, now, there is a bit of a gap uh, between him and first place. I believe the total gap is about six to seven seconds. Uh, so he's going to have quite a lot of work cut out to try and get that position back, uh, if at all possible. Uh, right now, we're going to have to see what happens between Ashton and McKieran. Yeah, McKieran just leading out Ashton through these S's. And Ashton with that front end damage, I'm not sure he can hold on to McKieran's pace. Richie going, yeah, sorry, I just saw a little off track there and thought McRitchie might be having an issue. I think it was just... It's just a, it's just a typical Dagna line. It's off track. I think that's one of the off tracks in iRacing that uh, I think every driver is ha has on his uh, <laughs> on his mantelpiece. Everyone's got an off, everyone can claim to have an off track there. I um, have 8x from yesterday's race. <laughs> And speaking of 8x, if you actually look, uh, James McRitchie has got 8 off tracks in total. Uh, compare that to driver number 2, Rob Graham, he's only got 1 off track. I think that just shows how hard James McRitchie is driving that car right now. Let's try and maintain that pole position. Thank you, Sammy, for that wonderful on-time graphic as we were talking about that. That is awesome. As Sarah says, sends it up to the inside of Al Amory, but Al Amory is so not ever to give up, but he does look like he's been having a lot of damage. That front right is beaten and battered. As Saracen goes a little bit off track, had a bit of a wiggle. Al Amory's definitely on the hunt as Kip Stevens is right behind him. Amory going around the outside with Kip right behind. And it looks like Kip is going to don't make this three wide, Kip. Oh, I don't think he's doing that. I think he's just trying not to push the uh, triple seven too far ahead. Um, as he knows that there's He's only an amateur, amateur class driver. There's no point in trying to push him forward, trying to push him for that win. He doesn't gain any positions here. But it doesn't look like Al Amory's returning the favor. It looks like he's fighting for that. Yeah, as we are on the last lap, white flag is out for race number three. Mick Ritchie and Graham leading out. We're looking at the battle for third currently between McKieran and Ashton, the last podium spot. As Ashton up the inside, heading into turn one. Out McKieran. And it looks like McKieran has exactly the same amount of damage that Jack Ashton does. And, uh, oddly enough, Ashton doesn't have any incident points at all for this race somehow. Uh, or at least doesn't have any off tracks. Um, he's, driven, dri he's really sort of uh, driven on the wheels of that thing. That perb job uh, to bring that thing up into P3 so far after having qualified, well, having started the race, uh, should I say, in 22nd position. Uh, particularly with the adventures that we saw towards the beginning of this race. Uh, he did a good job to survive some of that and just put laps in and, uh, and get some good track position. As we're looking at Battle for the 8th, a little bit of RG Bargy, a big curb hop for Real Emery as Hampson is trying to follow, follow him back. As well, that's a year one car taking the rally cross line. Uh, a very slow car back there, but I think that might have been a lapped car. Yeah. Uh, letting the drivers by. Al Amory up the inside. A weird exit by him as well for Emory. As Hansen steals the exit through 180R. And it looks like Emory's going to do exactly the same. I mean, I, I guess that just goes down to, like, you know, how well these guys have been driving so far. We haven't seen the amateur drivers just drop like a rock. They've done a real job of, of holding their position or, or you know, fighting for every every mark, every, every sort of meter of track that they've got on these guys. Uh, as James McRitchie has quite a sizable lead on, uh, on Graham as he looks like he's about to take the win of race number three and that was a really good job there put the uh, put the aggression in nice and early built up a lead got himself out of the way of any shenanigans and it looks like he's come home with a win the battle for third though that is heated up and that's going to the very bottom corner who's going to be mckieran or ashton it's going to be nick mckieran taking third place with ashton right behind but the excite streak is broken as it's asymmetric on the top step of the podium and excites off the podium now yeah i think uh with the 
with the 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 incidents that we had earlier on the race they didn't really uh fall in their favor well but also i don't want to take that jack ashton jack ashton did a superb drive i think by the end of the race dave hampson in p8 was our biggest mover of the day uh for no, similar no. racing no? no carl jacquelette 24 places up i think dave hampson had 27. I am bad at math. That's all right, no worries. But it's a very good point, Carl Jacquelet. After the first two races he had, he can't be he he, you know, he can't be sad with a 24 place gain. Uh, you know, finished P14. You look at that on paper and you say P14, and you're going to be happy with that. Uh, particularly a guy of Carl Jacquelet's caliber. But what he had to go through, particularly the mental strain of going through two two races, where you know, uh, I think if I remember, both of the incidents weren't his fault. I think he just caught up in other in other people's uh, other people's accidents and he still managed to bring it back to P14. Is James McRitchie trying to drift around the S's? You know what? I don't blame him. Do it. You crack on, James McRitchie. You Tokyo drift the life out of this. Uh, get it? Because we're in Japan. Tokyo drift. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right. Top I, I hate quality comedy. Top quality comedy from JJ Tub. Let's bring out the results. Oh. Oh. Also, I just love the way that the track's just gone completely to night right now. The the brake discs are discs. Excuse me. Brake discs are glowing. The orange indicators are indicating. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to James McRitchie. That was an awesome drive. He really deserves that. Can we just run the results right now? Yeah, of course we can. No worries at all. Do you want to take us through? <laughs> How about you do that? <laughs> no worries at all. Uh, so your race winner, James McRitchie, by quite a sizable 4.102 seconds. Uh, he takes out pole overall. Rob Graham is in second place, but overall winner for the AM class uh, for Team Automech. And going through the rest of our grids, you've got Nick McKieran finishing off your podium team with Jack Ashton with a superb drive for Excite Racing, your top Excite Racing driver there. You've got Carl Hardy and Joe McDonald, followed by Alex Cerny, David Hampson, Kip Stevens, Matthew Emery, Abdul Al Amri, Niels Carstensen, Brian J. Holmes, Carl Jackalot with his superb drive, bringing it back in race number three, Adam McNally in P15, and Jamie Ayres in P16 as well as Liam Silkstone and Ralph Cullinan in P18. Uh, he's driving for Result Race Royal Clothing. Excuse me. Uh, and shortly after that, we have got Phil Reagan, Stephen Baxter, Adam Delmont, Dale Benison, Martin Sampson, Jerome Ersom, Stephen Cooley, Steve Hefford, Ashley Beard, Charles Kellerman will finish in 28th position for Team Optical, the number 67 British machine there. And Scott Malcolm, Craig Jones, Peter Van Gogh, David Ayres, Benjamin Muse, Luke Cooper with a very unfortunate race there, followed by Stuart Dick with a similarly unfortunate race. Steve Hansford, Max Wright, and Andy Maxwell will finish eight laps down after a lap one incident. So I think that makes it time for us to spin the wheel there. Yep, that's right. The spinning wheel is on your screen and the spinning wheel is spinning. So let's see what do we get. Well, look at that. Another big reverse with full minus two. Full minus two. So luckily, as we're on this screen at the moment, it looks like we're going to get everyone in front of Craig Jones. So it looks like, do, 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 if I get that correctly, that is Scott Malcolm, I believe, will be your pole position uh, for the next race. I could be wrong with that because numbers are hard, so don't hold me to that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for joining us for race three, guys. I'll be seeing you in a few short minutes for our final race of the night under the lights at Suzuka.
Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have. The Chili Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the holy grail. coming for a splash. Three, two, one, now. All clear, punch it. Great job, you did really well. The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $100,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing.
Howdy, 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 and we are back for the final race of the night for the BSR MX-5 Pro Series. And I wonder if it's a little bit lighter out. Well, that's it, it's because our last race was supposed to be the final race, which was this race, but we kind of skipped over a little day cycle, so we're at this race now. So my draft around that, good, because I'm so confused by it. JJ. Uh, uh, you know, like we had quite, we had, uh, you know, unsuspecting weather at the weekend for, for the Formula One race. So we're just replicating that in BSR. Obviously, we just, you never know what's going to happen. Is it going to be a night race? Is it going to be a day race? Are we suddenly just going to get, you know, <laughs> midnight in the middle of a day race? It could all happen. It can all happen. Even cars spinning on the front straight and start to do donuts right in front of our camera. Thank you. There you go. Um, and also, it can all happen when you've got a near enough full reverse grid. We've got full reverse grid. Uh, minus two cars, I believe. Um, so, as you saw last race, um, I, th I think tonight's a pretty good explanation as to why we have uh, that reverse grid option. Seeing race two from race number one, we only had a 15 car reverse grid. Uh, still had some great racing up and down the field, uh, but the fast guys didn't have to work maybe that much harder uh, to get the position. Race three, a uh, much bigger reverse grid. They had to work and you could tell the pressure was on and it got to a few of the drivers that we usually don't see being affected too much. Mm -hmm. Race three was absolutely chaotic and if we reverse a grid that was reversed already, that's double reversing. It's reverse reception. Oh. Mind blown. <laughs> right, you want to take us through our reverse, reverse, reverse grid? Yes. Starting up polls, Peter Van Gogh, followed by Craig Jones, Scott Malcolm, Car Charles Calliman, Ashley Beard, Steve Heffer, Stephen Cooley, Jerome Ursa, Martin Sanson, Dale Benison, Adam Devon, and Stephen Baxter is our top 12. Following up behind him is Phil Regan, Ralph Cullingham, Liam Silkson, Jamie Ayers, Adam McNally, Carl Shacklett, Brian J. Holmes, Niels Carlson, Abdur L, Amy Matthew, Emery Kip, Stevens, and Dave Hansen, your top 24. Let's spin through the rest of these results before the lights start coming on. Yeah, and I think also the one that I'm going to quickly call out there, Carl Jacklett. Careful of him. So we're going to make up lots of plays the last race. You ready for the race? And we're off for the final race of today here at Suzuka for the BSR MX5 Pro Series. It's Sim Labs. Peter Van Gogh leading off the field. He makes an excellent start, but it looks like Charles Kellerman lost a couple of places uh, from his original starting position. He's down two into sixth position. Peter Van Gogh built up a nice little lead as I think everyone's getting through the first corner cleanly with maybe the exception of Stuart Dick. I saw him getting a little bit loose. Uh, further down the field. Not sure. Oh, no. Uh... Oh, what it's not his night. Carl? It's not Carl's night. He's having the same week this week that Jack Ashton had last week at Brands Hatch. He had one good race. 24 positions last race. We thought it was done. All done. No more mistakes. And then that happened. Oh, look at Jack Ashton down in 25th place. Try to move up through the field. We see him uh, right behind Alex Cesare, who's getting a very well, wide in front. Dana. Jamie Ayres is off. Oh, there's... And there was another one behind him. Yeah, Ayres is off as well as Carson's McKeeran. Up. As they're yeah. going three wide into the hairpin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to get crazy. Oh, oh it's in on the Aza. Look at the Aza. Oh, my That's goodness. Malcolm. James McRitchie. Is managing to rejoin safely. I'm having a look at which one of those similar cars. Dave Hampson was spun around. Facing the wrong way. Someone's the... stuck in the middle. Stop. Scott Malcolm doesn't seem to be having an issue uh, yeah, getting yeah. out of his car. He's certainly not smiling with that beautiful face of his uh, right now as he's in the pit yeah. lane. I think that was a, that was a <laughs> hectic uh, turn into the hairpin. Uh, looks like Ralph Cullinan's not having a particularly great race. He's lost 11 positions. I think he might have got caught up. Uh, in some of that. Other people are having slightly better races. Brian J. Holmes, uh, oh sorry, Matthew Emery in P12 has gained 10 positions as we're taking a look at Martin Sampson in the number 80 machine. Yeah, uh, Steve Cooley right behind him. Uh, yeah, he went like very off, off track. Uh, Cooley going to try to pull back on Martin Sampson. 
and Charles Kelly as we finish lap one, which was not as hectic as last time. And yet, you know, I got I got to call it back again. Carl Jacquelet, how Steve Hefford making a move on the inside of the corner. Uh, really good job there, nice and safe, nice. Definitely breaks in there and man, uh, pull it off well as we see him uh, clear up. Craig Jones, who's the first pro driver, we're seeing three wide out of the first corner, and Charles Kellerman going off. Yes, he did. Now we're going to try to come back. Oh my goodness! Liam Silkstone was just out of nowhere. Oh, uh, that's James Holmes and Silkstone. Oh, uh, seems to have got up in that. An Excite racing car. You don't see that too often parked at the side of the road. Uh, Liam Silkstone is doing his best to try and get out of the way. I think uh, he's got a heavily damaged car. It looks like a lot of people are going to be trying to avoid. Yeah, I don't think you're really going to be able to be that competitive with that car anymore, bud. Well, we saw him driving on two wheels around the hairpin. So, we know how good of a driver he is at tricky situations. So, Liam is going to try to get that thing back around the track, but just keep it out of the way from the other guys. Yeah, he did a good job of that. Didn't take anyone with him, so uh, so good job there. Alex Cerny and Jamie Ayres and Luke Cooper are having a good battle as Kip Stevens is throwing it inside two by two by two, two going through the hip in there that was, that was definitely an intense corner there a lot of people probably lost some positions uh, going through those moves there we've got Luke Cooper leading out this little pack here in the Sim Labs car and Jack Ashton not far behind him as we see uh, Jack Ashton fighting Regan as well going into the corner yeah, Ashton around the outside going to Spoon Corner. He had the outside line coming out of the hairpin, which gave him all the speed that he needed on the exit to make all those positions up. Made up three positions into one corner, riding high on the curb just a little bit. Saw a bit of sparks flying from under these cars. Uh, so the ride height is a little bit too low for that corner. So I don't think it will be causing him a lot of damage as we look up at Cooley, McNally, and Emery in the battle for seventh. Yeah, I think uh, having a look at the challenge here, a few of the AM drivers. Have... Jamie Ayres, I believe, putting a move on the inside. Casio turn. Or well, Casio. What did we say it was? Triangle. I knew it began with T. Got there in the end. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jamie Ayres having a great move into that complex as uh, we see him uh, holding in front of uh, Dale Benison at the moment. We've got Jack Ashton. Looking like he's... Oh, yeah, he's, he's going to get it! Inside. That oh. was such a recovery move by Jack Ashton. We saw Luke Cooper try to make a move going down the inside. He didn't get it. And then he went a little bit slow. Then out of nowhere, Ashton went for it. And what a move by Jack Ashton. A little bit down the field. Dale Benison and Nick McCarran going side by side. McCarran in that orange Sim Labs car. Benison in the results clothing white car. I think, uh, I think we've had a pretty good start to the race. James McRitchie, uh, we're looking at at the moment, he's up 13 positions. He was our previous race winner. Uh, it's a little bit harder when you're not, st when you're... Um... Starting last. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you're not quite graced with a uh, <laughs> good track position, shall we say. Um, but he has done a good job of earning 13 positions so far. Luke Cooper a little bit in front of him. He's gained 20 positions. He's done a superb job, as we're seeing James McRitchie uh, throwing it down the inside and doing a pretty good job there. And Jerome Ursa. Not had the greatest of starts, but Jamie Ayres is looking like he's going to go around the end outside of Jerome. Uh, Excite not having the greatest of starts this race. Oh, Steve no, 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 no. That's Jerome oh. Ursa. We were just saying not the best starts. Well, Spoon is definitely not his best corner. As he went in for that move, and I don't know if this was just a grip thing, as we have a three-way fight for the lead, Azrebeer, Hepburn, and Van Gool. Uh, don't forget Van Gool, he started on pole. He's lost a couple positions uh, since the beginning of the race, but we're back to seeing the Excite and Synlab race uh, that we were looking at a little bit earlier on, uh, with Hepburn and Van Gool being the Synlab representatives in this little battle. Got to be a little bit careful though, because uh, they do risk potentially letting the gap to the cars behind close in. Yeah, as we see an interesting drastic situation, that's a slow year one car. That's Stephen Cooley. 
Plus have had a little bit of an incident coming out of Triangle's chicane as he's falling down place and place and place. I think, judging at the fact that he's still got speed on him, I think he might have got a slowdown. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Probably. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Jamie Ayres, uh, having a look here in P9. This is the battle for P9 at the moment. We've got Luke Cooper trying to hold off Jack Ashton, who's built up a, a little bit of a lead over Alex Cerny, although Alex Cerny might just be biding his time knowing that he can follow Jack Ashton. Uh, Jack Ashton been making some great moves uh, tonight so far, and it looks like he's just keeping on moving that. Although, one thing that had gone unnoticed by me, Luke Cooper up 24 positions since the beginning of this race. Yeah, he's currently the biggest mover, and yes, I checked before saying that. Uh, he is currently the biggest mover in the field, leading out Jack Ashton and Alex Esri, the charging three cars. And don't we'll forget, we've still got Jamie Ayres in front of him as well. Cooper going wide, letting Ashton have the inside, but Cooper's going to have the exit on the speed, using those big brain plays to... Let him have the corner, but you're going to have the exit. Play big price place. Oh. Back up front, Hepford, Beard, and Van Gool. Now, are we going to see three wide, three 130R? I hope I don't we don't, we and I really hope we do at the same time. We're going to see two wide, though, from the hood of Hefford. Hefford, which line is he going to take? Is he going to take the left line, or is he going to take the middle line? Van Gool up onto the inside, cutting the nose. That was well played. Beard. Holy hell. That was a great defensive offensive move, which is the exact same word, honestly. Your best defense is the be Your good offense is a great defense. That was a very defensive overtake by Van Gool, not letting Beard have any room to operate with and now Beard going way down the inside Heifer going way around to the outside Van Gool is just sitting right there Van Gool is going to get overtaken by Beard yeah I don't think there was much he could have really done, done there to try and do it Beard made it his intention clear from the onset he wanted the inside line uh, going into first corner uh, but we are seeing Delmont creep in. Uh, as we mentioned a few laps ago if I just have a look through here uh, Adam Delmont He's only 1.5 seconds behind. That was 2.6 seconds a lap or two ago. So these guys are holding each other up, and having another Excite teammate might just be what Ashley Beard needs. Yep, having a teammate is always what you need. And Beard being up front, they can control the pace as they head into the Dignas. But you got the Simlabs team, and you have the Excite team. Beard needs to hold them up as much as they can to get Adam Delmont back up behind him. And with a charging Peter Van Gool, not going to be able to have it. And Beard has a better exit. So I believe Van Gool and his Heffern are going to swap positions now. And look at Delmont. He's less than half a second now. He's in the draft. He's with it. I reckon after Spoon, 130R, we're going to see Delmont threatening a position on uh, whichever one of these Sim Lab racing cars is unfortunate enough to be behind. It's Excite and Sim Labs racing it on for the final race today, for the final for the final race for the top steps on the podium. Now, this is where you've got to be really clear about what you want to do. Uh, 130R is <laughs> not your friend if you don't take like Steve Hefford might be going around the outside of 130R. Are we going to see the draft van coming into play here? This is a Seems risky move for Hepper. Very wide. Hepper goes extremely wide. That's definitely an off-tracker. Very risky. Did both of them make it? Of I think they did. Unless Beard go takes that corner a little bit too well. But no, Beard's made a mistake. But both of them, they both make a mistake. Van Gool and Hepper racing like it's the lap, rap, last lap here as Adam Delmas rejoined the fight for the lead. Double oh. overtake. <laughs> Wow, that that was uh, that was that was very impressive. But now, what are we going to see? They've both got to defend against Delmont, and I think he's going to throw up the inside. And he just manages to make it stick. 
He's got the speed. Does he have the aces though? Does he have the quarter position? Does Peter Van Gool's all over? But Adam Delop makes the inside move on Peter Van Gool. And now one more track is Steve Hepburn. Hello, Mazda MX-5 front drill. Having a look no, through there, Beard might be setting up another overtake of his own. We look back from the gearbox of Delmont on the front nose of Peter Van Gool as Beard might have a little bit of an issue, but there are three laps remaining in this race. So don't count anyone out just yet. Beard's probably just regaining themselves. Yeah, I think a uh, worst case scenario would have been maybe just a little bit off track and uh, lost a bit of traction there as we're seeing oh, Jamie, Jamie Air Ayers off. I didn't see what happened with him. There's another car. That's a Cooper 35. seems to have got uh, involved in it as well. That's that's not what you want to see. That is definitely not what you want to see. Back up front, Hefford, Delmont, Delmont around the outside at 180R going into Spoon. Who's going to make the move going into Spoon and have the lead going to the back straight? A little bit of bumping, grinding, door banging here in Suzuka as Adam Dilbot takes the lead for Excite Racing. He's done that pretty well, but I mean, Beard, he's managed to close that gap in again. There's nothing really to worry about here. They haven't got pressure from the car behind is uh, Craig Jones, but he's our amateur club. Uh, leader, so they don't really have anything to worry about that and the gap behind that two seconds Which is basically a light year around this place and you don't really need to worry about it as Beard wow. goes full send Full send into the back end and they all went breaking onto the inside They were defending from each and every one of each other except for Beard Beard took the line normally and Beard starting to gain on Delmont, Hefford and Van Gool You know what I, I can see a scenario here where Exxon are gonna start challenging for a, for a one two podium finish. Uh, if they're not too careful, if, or if the Sim Labs boys, should I say, aren't careful about Hefford going around the outside of first corner. He's got this the run. Can he hold move. it? Hefford's gone wide. He's on the curve that back end. You can see it's starting to slip out. He was on the braces a little bit trying to get the speed, but he's got the position. Who's going to dive in into the corner? Hefford gets his nose in there, but Van. But Delmont also getting in, but around the outside, it's Steve Heffer for Sin Labs taking the lead. And now you've got Van Gaal to worry about as well, although Van Gaal's bid seeming to challenge in behind. Degna's coming up, this is definitely close, because it's not the type of corner where you can run nose to tail. Heffer and Delmont side by side. Getting the front nose into the Dagnas. Heffer's going to have to take a challenge line. Here comes Delmont. And you know what? I was 100% sure they were both going to make, going to uh, collide there. McNally seems to have had an in down in P10. Not entirely sure what happened with him. As Steve Heffer throws it up the inside. And we've also got Van Gool trying to make oh, it work. Is Heffer going to be able to block him off? That was wonderfully defended by Heffer. Hefford went wide, not leaving any exit space for Van Gool. Van for Delmont. Delmont has all the speed. He's, I think he's actually bump drafting Hefford coming into Spoon. Looking back from Van Gool onto the front nose of Delmont as Hefford maybe a little bit too less of space going into Spoon as here he comes. And they oh, tapped it a little bit. Nice. And oh my goodness, he saved it from the slide as Hefford. De aggressively defends for P1. Yeah, and just while we were talking there, Stuart Dick got involved in something. He's dropped all the way down. Juice. Uh, as oh, actually, no, I think he might have just got overtaken. Never on that one. But going back to our race on the leaders, Van Gool back up to P1. We've got a Sim Labs 1 2 on our hands. Are the XI boys going to have anything to say about it as we're about to take the white flag? White flag about to be dropped. Here in Suzuka for the BSR MX-5 Pro Series. And for the final race of the night, Peter Van Gool leads him out, followed by Hefford, Ashley Beard, and Adam Delbot, your top four. Now, is Beard going to throw it up the inside into first corner? He has a look, but he doesn't quite want to try it. Hefford's gone wide, but I think that was just the best move to sell a dummy. Wait for the 130R overtakes. Try to get up as close as possible to them. 
Van Gool leading out Hefford. Beard trying to get as close as possible to them. Delmont has had a superb drive this race. He's up seven positions, which although might not be one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest numbers we've seen out of today's race, it's definitely to sniff at as we're going to see Beard potentially look at making a move into the first Egna. I think you're right. I think he's probably going to leave until a little bit later on in the race. I think Sampson's had an issue further on down the field. I saw an off track and him drop two positions. Just keeping an eye on our midfield pack as both Simlabs drivers and Delmont behind all decided to take some very aggressive lines through there. Are we going to see Beard setting up the inside or going for the outside move? Beard's going for the outside move. Heffern onto the inside. Is he going to is he going to hurt the exit? Yes, he does. Ashley Beer is going to be hurt on that exit. Not going to have the exit speed. Hefford's defending for Van Gool. This is what teammates do. Hefford not letting Beard have any room up the inside heading into Spoon. But Hefford, he's going to have to leave some room or else he's going to cause a collision. Here comes Beard setting up the inside. And Beard's got P2. And that might be the deciding fact, because don't forget, Beard is going to get the run and potentially the draft. Although, looking at that, Van Gool say, Van no, Gool. Kevin, give it to you. Van Gool is hurting his own run by sitting onto the inside of the track, kicking up a bit of dust as Heffer now up onto the inside ahead of Beard. Who's going to have the pedal to the metal farther? Who's going to have the guts higher? Beard goes way off track. Hefford swinging ahead, heading into the triangle skate. It's Van Gool, Hefford, and Beard. Beard got short, going to go try for the switchback. It's going to be a photo finish for P2. Beard around the outside, switching back to the inside as Van Gool takes the victory. Back to second place. It's going to be Hefford ahead of Beard. Yeah, and that's something that we do, probably don't talk too much about in motorsports. That was just amazing defensive driving. I know that that was... Kieran seems to be having to do with his rear axle <laughs> as he rejoins the track on P14. Uh, I know that uh, I know that sort of towards the uh, last few laps of that race, there were a few battles going down on the pack. Um, I know that we did see uh, Stuart Dick, Car Hardy, and uh, I believe another driver that I think has finished that I can't see the name of. Uh, I know that they had some good battles, and I think we had some drama down the field in regards to some incidents. Uh, sorry for not being able to get them on screen, but that was because we had such a great race at the front and we got a Van Gaal Steve Hefford Simlab Racing 1 2. Great, great race up at the front for all those guys, as we're getting a pretty uh, smoky show down at the uh, turn one. Yeah, this is why we wanted the lights on. We wanted to be able to see oh, them. Look at the sun rising. Oh. And they <laughs> Donuts all around for the guys. A typical BSR epic. What a great with the sim labs cars uh i think to be honest looking at excite racing finishing in p3 as well uh they were pretty dominant all race as let's take a look at the final race results austin do you want to try and take a uh take a take a chat through it or have we not got the microphone set up yet No, I think we've still got some issues. Okay, no worries at all. Uh, so, looking at the final race result, we've got Peter Van Gaal, your Sim Lab Racing winner, uh, followed by Steve Hefford, who did a beautiful defensive drive to bring home a Team 1 2, uh, a whole second in front of Ashley Beard, who is your leading XI I Racing driver, uh, a team that was dominant all night tonight, uh, followed by Adam Delmont in P4. Craig Jones is your pro, uh, sorry, your AM champion of, the, well, this race, I suppose. <laughs> He's finishing up in P5. Really solid drive by him. Uh, nicely ahead of the remaining uh, AM classes. Going through the rest of the field, we've got Alex Zerny, Matthew Emery, James McRitchie, your race three winner. Jack Ashton managed to put it in P9 after a relatively tough uh, tough evening of races here, but he has managed to make quite a few gains. 
uh, Abdul Al Amri, Jerome Urson, Kip Stevens, Stephen Cooley, Nick McKeary, and Carl Jacquelet uh, brings it home in P15 after having uh, quite a, a hectic evening. Uh, Martin Sampson, Charles Kellerman, Jamie Ayres uh, will be your P18 driver. In the Simlabs machine, we've got Dale Benison, Steve Hansford, Phil Reagan, Luke Cooper, Andy Maxwell, Joe McDonald, Ralph Cullinan, David Ayres, Benjamin Muse, and Adam McNally will finish in P28 for Excite Racing. He's your English number 478 driver. Uh, great race for him. Uh, looking at the AM class that we're kind of looking at at the moment, uh, we've had a really, <coughs> really challenging race uh, for the entire grid for tonight sorry i'm <laughs> just gonna take a sip of water one sec there we go uh right where were we i believe we were p28 wonderful awesome so max Wright in p29 uh stuart dick p30 didn't have a didn't have a, a clean race towards the end of this or him falling down towards the end so uh we'll find out what happened with him later on robin great rob graham p31 carl hardy p32 liam silkston brian j holmes nils carstensen scott malcolm stephen baxter and dave hampson will finish out P38, and he'll be your last driver for tonight. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for choosing to spend your Tuesday evening with us. This was Suzuka. We had some great racing here. Team Excite, relatively dominant towards the end of the, uh, towards the overall look for the rest of the evening. And that will lead us into next week. If you guys want to join us again, it'll be the same time again next Tuesday, 8.15 uh, GMT or BST or whichever one England's in at the moment because we seem to change it all the time. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Austin Knight was on the comms with me. Sam was on the mic, was on the cams. And we would very much like to see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful evening and see you later.